Hallelujah. Y'all hear me good? Amen. Amen. It's an honor and a privilege to be here uh, with like precious believers. Amen. Amen. I want to take this time and tell Pastor Curtis, Sister Robin, and, and the Crossway family here in Queen City, Texas, that we are uh, grateful to be here with you and uh, just just honored. Amen. I got my brother in Christ right here with me, Brandon Buller. Uh, he's, he's my road dog, and uh, we just go like Paul and Silas sometimes. Amen. And I thank God for this brother right here. He's determined to know nothing else but Christ and him crucified. Amen. Amen. I hope you didn't come wanting to hear nothing else because I don't have nothing else to give but what God gave. Amen. Amen. I preach what God gave. Amen. He gave his only begotten son to redeem humanity. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God for the blood today. He's clothed me in my right mind. Amen. I'm seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus because of that blood shed at Calvary. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We got something to shout about today. We got something to sing about. Amen. When we sing those beautiful songs in here in worship, you know, it means something to me because I, I know where he found me. Amen. Amen. I was lost and undone. And, and hey, church, I ain't got to tell you all my dirt that where he delivered me and set me free from, but I know where he found me. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been redeemed by the blood. Hallelujah. You know, as Moses was hid in the cleft of the rock. Amen. Let me be finding hiding in that place in Christ. Amen. That's in his death. Amen. Hallelujah. There's not another place that we could be found that God wants to work for a people today. Amen. He's wanting to work for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to take this time and just uh, those that are watching by internet, we, we thank you for uh, allowing us to be a part of your day. Uh, you can also find us. I'm Pastor Scotty Williams from Dublin, Georgia. Uh, you can uh, look us up on our YouTube page. It's Crossway Fellowship YouTube page. And you can also on, uh, I got Scotty Williams Facebook page and Crossway Fellowship Facebook page. So you can, uh, you can find us there. And we'll be grateful. You can we just preaching this good old gospel. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The old path. Amen. It's not something new. Uh, we're just preaching what God gave us to preach. Amen. He gave us one message from Genesis to Revelation. And it's Christ and Him crucified. Amen. And I'm grateful for this to have eyes to see and ears to hear today. Uh, but I didn't I, I come here to, tonight to tell you and to encourage you and to remind you that we must be planted in his death. Amen. If I was going to title it, we talked about it this morning, and I just kind of felt pressed again uh, before we come back this way and planted in his death. But we're going to be uh, taking our text out of Jeremiah 17. If you want to go ahead and start flipping there, Jeremiah 17. Hallelujah. God's good. Amen. 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 Let's all stand. Go for the Lord in prayer over the word. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you, God, tonight. We thank you for this opportunity, God, to come into your house. God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, we thank you, God, because of what Jesus Christ did on that cross to set us free and redeem us and bring us back in relationship with you, Father. And God, we'd ask you, God, that you would take this time, God, that you would take this word, and God, that you would apply it. Give us illumination of the revelation of Christ and him crucified. God, illuminate it to our hearts. God, let us be get more determined in this truth. God, just wipe away all the things that tries to hinder us and block us from seeing what you have in the Scriptures clearly, God. Let miracles take place in this house from the preaching of your Word. God, let it be done in this house. We're just here wanting to worship you in spirit and in truth. Look in your Word in the context of your Son and what He's done. We ask it all in Jesus Christ's mighty name. And the church says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Once again, I'm, I'm honored to be here to stand at this sacred spot right here. Amen. Uh, Pastor Curtis and Sister Robin are a blessing to us in Crossway Fellowship in Dublin, Georgia. To testify for a second right quick, uh, our church pretty much has, got, has been birthed because of this ministry right here in Queen City. Because of the preaching of the cross and this determined preaching that comes forth from this little town right here in Queen City if, at times you might not feel like you're impacting much but Dublin Georgia has as, as a church been planted there now that's preaching this truth Christ and him crucified and it was birthed because of hearing ministers that would stand up just like Pastor Curtis and proclaim it not worrying about what's coming or any of that because he let the truth penetrate his heart 
and letting God speak through it. And I thank God that men and women are stand up unfiltered with this word and preach it as God wrote it. Amen. And I'm praying for more to be raised up. Amen. I'm praying for more to be raised up. And I want you to know if you're in driving distance of Queen City, Texas, my Lord, driving distance. We just say driving distance because you, when this truth, you drive. Amen. When this truth penetrates your heart, you drive. Amen. We need to be yoked up together in this last days. Hallelujah. Talking about what heaven's talking about. Amen. The slain lamb. There's nothing else being talked about in heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But in Jeremiah 17, we're going to be taking our text from verse 5, and we'll read a, a few of them to, through 8. But it says this. this is talk, we're talking about being planted in Jesus' death and what it means and, 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 and what the world and the church and the system today that man tries to bring on the scene. Uh, and, and there's a lot of things that we can learn right here, but he says some very profound things here as the Holy Spirit does. In verse 5, he says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed be the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm, and whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a heath in the desert, and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, and in a salt land, and not inhabited. Wow. That's serious. See, the Lord wants us to understand that his son was sent for a purpose and a plan for me and you to redeem us, to set us free from that nature, that endemic nature in Adam. It's the sin nature. And that if we're not going God's prescribed way and His prescribed order, that God's provision through Jesus Christ and Him crucified, if we're not truly resting in the flesh of Jesus Christ, meaning the work that He did there, that righteous work, and we'll be found trusting in man and our own strength, will, and ability. See, there's so many fads and so many schemes and so many things that the church brings on the scene today because they're not trusting in the simplicity of Christ and Him crucified, that His death is my death, His, His life is my life, His victory is my victory. But it only comes to where we start to rest in what He did, to start believing and quit fighting a fight that's already been won. That's a true statement. To quit wrestling something that God wants to work in a land right now in year 2021. He wants to work mightily through the preaching of the cross, through believers on work, on site, job sites, at, at home, in the schools, at, in, in the church house. He wants to work mightily, but, but he's got to get the individual to know that this is personal. This is personal. This walk with God is personal. When Jesus Christ came as a lamb, that lamb in the Old Testament, it was personal. When you would take animal sacrifices to the tabernacle, it was personal. See, why is it that we, we don't make it personal no more with Jesus? Because he's got to be your lamb. He died for the world as a whole, but he's got to be your lamb for your sin. See, man is falling short of the glory of God today. Saved, spirit-filled Christians love God with their whole heart, and they're falling short of that glory. Why? Because they're not going the way God's provision is through the arm of His strength, His Son. His Son was His arm, His strength. But when the Bible says, Cursed be the man who trusts in man, we're gathered here today, praise God for a cross-preaching church. We're gathered here today because we realize that trusting in man's hand and trusting in our own strength, will, and ability got us nowhere. It really, uh, got, we was cursed, amen. And we realized we couldn't do the things that we wanted to do. We couldn't serve a holy living God. But God says... Cursed be the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm. When we make up fads and three point points and a poem, when we, we say, if I can just achieve these three steps, God's going to meet me there. Well, friend, we read it about today, Pastor Curtis, in Romans 5, 21, that God's grace reigns through righteousness, and that righteousness is only revealed in the gospel, and the gospel is the person and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
God's grace is God coming to do a work that you desperately need this hour, not something later because the Bible says right now faith is. When you believe in the right place, the right object, the right position, God can work for his people. See, we got to get to a place where, you know, it's really shadow boxing the devil. <laughs> and all he's doing is a rope of dope and a lot of people and he's, he's shadow boxing them to the edge and he's toying with them and he's playing games with them. And, and listen, he's so deceived, he still thinks he's going to win in the end. So he's trying to make everything sound like the gospel. He's trying to present everything that, that looks like the gospel. But our gospel is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. You can't have Jesus without the crucified Lamb. That's another Jesus. And my Bible says it's another spirit because when we go out of the order and the prescribed way that God says, and we're going to read tonight, I hope you ain't got no plans to be nowhere because I, I got a word and I got a lot of scripture because I don't like giving you a lot of my opinion. <laughs> Amen, Brother Scotty. Amen. You don't need to hear a lot about what I'm saying, what God says. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Revelations that he's coming back on a white horse. And his name is the Word of God. And those that are with him, behind him, is going to be riding white horses clothed in white linen. That's me and you, church, if we make it only in by the blood. Yes, but let me tell you something about that word of God. His name is the word of God. Jesus is the word. John 1, 14 says, the word became flesh and it dwelt among us. Hallelujah. But when you see him on that white horse, his vesture's dipped in blood. It's, if the word of God that you're reading is not dipped in blood, you cannot see the way God wrote it. His pen didn't have ink. It was wrote with blood. <laughs> the hand of God, that, that victory that he won through his son. But when you preach Christ crucified, when it's presented, it cuts everything that man brings to the table. And hallelujah for that. Hey, I've gotten to the place, I say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, that you remove anything that Scotty tries to bring to the table. Because we can get rid of our halos for a second. We all do it at times. <laughs> Preaching good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his arm. That means he's dependent. On carnal man, he's dependent on man's schemes and abilities, man's fads, man's routines, man's things that he comes up with. But let me tell you, I said it last time I was here preaching, you can't get the answer from the problem. <laughs> I don't know what we're thinking, we're just going to wake up tomorrow or some's got it and we're just trying to achieve to get there. But let me tell you, that's deception of the sin nature making us think that way. That's that fall in the garden. Jesus Christ was sent to die for me. That sin nature that was in me, that I was born after Adam and needed to be born again. And when I got born again, let me tell you something, church, it don't just stop there. I got to keep living where I got saved. Salvation's deep. Salvation's deep. It's not shallow as many make it. And we'll we'll say it loosely at times that, oh, he just saved me what he did, my Lord. Salvation's deep because that's where everything stems from. Hallelujah. Lord, have your way in my heart. He said he makes the flesh of his arm. His arm is, 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 is what he's looking to, his strength. And he says, whose heart departs from the Lord. Now, when we start to depend on our own strength, will, or ability to get victory over that sin, I want you to know something about uh, uh, acts and fruits of sins. We are, we are so focused on acts of sins that it's obvious that there's, there's fruit there of doing wrong. Amen? But if you don't understand that there's a source that's producing that fruit, you can never get rid of the fruit. 
See, when we start to realize that what Jesus Christ did at the cross in his flesh as a man, he was dying for this man. And there's no possible way until we get the glory and get your glorified body. We got to keep rendering it to where he dealt with that nature at the cross. We got to keep rendering it. You think about a bad thought you had today. We got to continually, I'm going to tell you something, every second, every hour of the day, I like to keep my mind and my heart focused on the work that he did at Calvary. When my feet hit the floor, I want to be thinking about what he did. Hallelujah. Amen. Because at that altar, that fire will not go out. That's the altar of the cross. It'll keep burning. You don't have to put wood on it. God keeps that fire burning. You hear me tonight? God keeps that fire burning. All you got to do is get in. Where did you get in? At his death at the cross. We don't get in by trying to speak it just right. Because I'm a country boy from Georgia. And my Lord, if you knew my education, you wouldn't, he probably wouldn't. Well, you probably would hear you at Cross Preacher Church. We go some places, oh, if you ain't got plaques and accolades on the wall, you can't do nothing. Amen. Hallelujah. I got the blood. Got the Holy Ghost. I'm equipped with everything I need. But God says, son, daughter, I give you one way that I'm going to work for you. It's not in the flesh of man. It's not in your strength, will, or ability. It's not in you trying to think another thought and get that out of your mind. It's you realizing what Jesus did at that cross for that bad thought, what he did for that bad nature. When you think about Calvary, not just thinking about a wooden beam, you're thinking about the work that he did on that beam. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. That my Lord, he pulled me out of the grips of hell. Yeah. That love. That love. Until you realize you need him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Until you realize you need him. When I got saved, Pastor Curtis, I realized I needed him. When you got saved, you realize you need him. And I want you to know, Pastor Curtis says it all the time. We are, if you really got saved by the blood, we all come in by the cross. So if you come in the right way, the problem is staying determined. It's not depend on the flesh of man. And my, I'm going to be honest with you, the man or woman in the mirror. Depending on what they can do. It's resting. There's a rest that remains for the people of God, but they enter in because of not unbelief. It's unbelief. They don't enter in that rest. Lord, help us be found in this final hour of the church, resting in that work, that work of the cross. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed to say cross. You don't have to preach it like I preach it, but we better know what you're pointing to. Be obvious, amen. I can tell by your work where your faith said. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's read on. He says, For he shall be like a heath in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and a salt land and not, and not inhabited. This, this bush that you look up and you study about this bush, it doesn't have no root, and it's pretty much similar to a tumbleweed. <laughs> here we are back talking about tumbleweeds. <laughs> Seems like every time I get up here, I talk about a tumbleweed. But I want you to know something. When we don't go God's way and what he did in his son's flesh, we begin to be like this bush, and there might be some watching my internet tonight that feels that they become thirsty for the things of God that they once tasted by his cross. See, that might be you here today that you, that you feel thirsty and you feel, you feel like it, 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 there's no fruit in your life because it's a fruitless bush. See, apart from Christ in that vine, there's not going to be no fruit. See, we think by what we see or what we do is fruit, but at the end of the day, it's me believing in what Christ did at the cross, really that simple. His death is my victory. Me staying focused there, determined not to move from there, keep looking there, and God produces the fruit. So he sees, we see right here in the Scripture, it says, these parched places in the wilderness. We're in the wilderness per se right now. 
We're just waiting to get to that home of glory. And you better believe the enemy, he doesn't want, he doesn't care who you are, what you do, he wants your faith. He wants your faith. He wants to rob you of that liberty that you have in Christ. And I want you to know something. If you're not just listening to Christ and Him crucified being preached outside this church, outside these walls, I want you to know something. Hallelujah. The devil is not going to preach one message. He's not going to preach the message that crushed his head. He's not going to preach the, the message that he stripped the devil who had the power of death. Who had the power of death. But when we trust in something other than, than, than the provision of God uh, through His Son and what He's done, and we, we start to look to these three steps or this, this thing or that or whatever I do in my strength to get victory over that sin. And listen, church, we'll look at fruits, but it's a sin nature that you're trying to get victory over. And that sin nature must be wrecking dead. It happened 2,000 years ago, and you got to believe that work right now. Yes. Now faith is. And that faith ain't something just we just we say we'll put faith in this put, it's the faith of the Son of God. That faith is perfect. That faith cannot fail. We was dealt that measure of faith at conversion. It was dealt out of that perfect faith and gave to you. That measure of faith can only work if it looks back where it came from. It's got to line up because, see, you put your faith in these, these three steps and you got that faith and it can't work. It can't work and then you wonder why I'm struggling again, why I'm going through the things and you feel like this, you feel, you feel thirsty and you just can't get that drink of that living water. He's saying come back to the well. He's saying come drink again. Hallelujah. That well will never run out. It flows from Calvary's hill. You know something about Jesus' death? His death produced life. The Bible says he was raised from the dead. Life come from his death. You can't put faith in his life. It's got to be in his death. Wow. Amen. Because it's misplaced faith. See, many say, put your faith in the resurrection. His resurrection was declaring what took place at Calvary's hill, that he dealt with the problem, and glory be to God, the grave couldn't hold him. The problem was an endemic nature in Adam. The Bible says he was going in the likeness of sinful flesh. He condemned it in his. Hallelujah. By that perfect work in his flesh on that cross, that's whose arm you lean on. Hallelujah. If we are starting to depend back on it solely, personally, as my personal lamb, my personal sacrifice, and I'm going to lean on that, everlast, un, that unchanging hand, that everlasting hand, amen, that one that doesn't change, the one that saved you. You ever thought about this when preaching the cross, you, you, you think everybody want to hear it, but you learn the reason why not is because they're trusting in a lot of flesh, a lot of, a lot of their doing and a lot of their stuff because when I come to the cross, I'll just be honest with you, I had to admit I've been wrong. What I was doing wasn't working. I was tired of faking it. I was tired of faking it. And then when I come to the Word of God and He showed me in the Word of God in the context of His Son and what He's done, hallelujah, that there's no condemnation to those who are in Him. There's no guilt, no shame. That I come to him, here I am. I, I'm not worried about my fig leaves no more. I'm not trying to muster up something that like it's not. I'm coming to you, Lord, because you died for me while you, I was yet a sinner. You've seen me at my worst. You've seen me at my worst. I don't have to fake it. That's a lie from the enemy. You don't have to fake it till you make it. That's some garbage that's going on in Georgia. They do. I'm going to tell you something. There's how foolish the flesh is. There's even a thing going on in Dublin, Georgia, where they're throwing up in trash cans and saying they're purging themselves. 
That's trusting in the arm of the flesh. My God did it perfect. We serve a perfect and an old time God, and I mean that. He, 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 had a, he had a plan before the foundation of the world was in his son and the slain work that he was going to do at the cross. He had a plan that he seen and spoke and worked through. Church, we can't work through no other, no other way the way God worked through it. If God worked through it, we must be found working through it. <laughs> Let's read on. So we see about this bush, but let's read something. Verse 7, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. I believe I'm looking at some people tonight that they're trusting in what the Lord did for them. They're trusting in that perfect work. Their, their hope is in Him. And if it ain't tonight, tonight is your night because now faith is. Because now faith is. See, the problem with trusting what Jesus did at the cross is we're dependent upon an invisible God to do our work. You can't see Him. But when you believe that righteous work that He did at Calvary, you've seen Him. He says you can't help but speak the things that we have heard and seen. It lines you back up into the place that God is your God. That he loves you with unfailing love, but he can't just do anything for you. He's got to work through his son in the work that he did at the cross. So blessed is that man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is the Lord. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreads her roots by the river and shall not see when heat comes. But her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, whenever we're in the midst of a drought. Have you looked at the, in the land today? But listen, when you're so caught up with Jesus Christ and Him crucified, when you're so caught up with looking at He is your victory, the work that He did, you can't even see that you're in a drought. The Bible says you can't even tell when the heat comes. That's where He made that table in Psalms 23 in the presence of our enemies. That's the table of the cross, friend. That's the table of the cross. There ain't but one thing on that cross. That work that he did there, he's sitting on the right hand of the Father because the work's finished. But there wasn't but one work there. You can't bring nothing to it. You can't add nothing to it. You can't take away from it. God only works one way. There's only one way that the heat won't bother you. See, all that's distractions, winds of doctrines, doctrines of devils. Because there's a spirit working behind that stuff. How do you test and see and try them? If they be of God, God's provision. God's will in his way, preach the cross and just see. I don't have to worry. I don't have to try to make life happen. My Bible says just get in my way, get in my provision, get in my son and what he's done, and I'll work it out. To be honest with you, it's a hiding place. It's a safe place. It's under the shadow of the Most High. If he says you'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil. Why? Come on, somebody. It's a shadow. It's, a, it's, it's just the shadow of death. That means he done took my death at Calvary. Come on, somebody. And now if I keep looking at that cross, it's just a shadow. We just passing through this land. But let me tell you something. That's only for those that believe in God's provision and plan. That's Christ and Him crucified. But when you get determined for this, God will do the clearing. God will remove the stuff off your table. You got to make your mind up, a conscious decision. Hey, when you got saved, you believed it. You got to do this daily, believe what He did at that cross for your victory. Y'all with me? And the more you do that, as the Apostle Paul says, he was being fully persuaded. God will persuade you by the Scripture. The path of the just is shine brighter 
and brighter. Proverbs 4, 18, until that perfect day. We was justified by the blood. And when I read this word through the blood where I was justified, it shines brighter and brighter and brighter. And I know something about light. Darkness has to flee. <laughs> Makes me want to shout. So blessed is that man that's trusting. Where, and he was talking about a tree planted by this water. It's, it's life. I'm just talking about it's got to be planted for it to be life. Amen? So we see that he says, let's read verse 8 again. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. Now this is he who trusts in the Lord. And if you're trusting in the Lord, that means you're trusting in his will and his way. That he sent his son already to do the work. He accomplished it. Do we believe that work? Because before this, you got to look at the Scripture. It's talking about trusting in the arm of flesh. Okay? For me not to trust in this arm of flesh, I must look to what he did in his flesh. Y'all with me? So when you trust in what he did in his flesh, that means the work that he did at Calvary. How many of us know that people say, well, oh, they was exam he was examined by the law of God. The law of God examined Jesus. Amen. The Bible says he fulfilled it. And the Bible says also on the cross that day in the scriptures that he says it is finished. So now that the righteousness might be fulfilled in us is we got to trust where we get in him, where we're planted in him. It's in his death. So we trust in that will in that way. That's God's way. God's only way. Hallelujah. So we see that he says a tree planted by the waters and that spreads out her roots by the river and shall not see when he comes, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Now I want you to look at these next two verses right quick before we jump over where we're fit to go. We're going to go to 1 Peter 4 next. But he says the heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked, who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his way and according to the fruit of his doing. The Bible says if we trust in his will and his way right here, he says your leaf will be green in a drought. God will do the fruit doing, the fruit bearing. That we can trust in this, but we got to be real with ourselves. You hear people today, they say, follow your heart. <laughs> Just trust in your heart. Well, every time I've done that, I've gotten a mess. Amen. There's not some got good hearts and some got bad. Amen. God knows our heart. He knows our motive. He knows, he knows the very intent of the heart. He sees it as if it's naked. See, those fig leaves that Adam put on in the garden that whenever he uh, come against the commandment that God gave, he broke it. Sin came in and he tried to put those fig leaves on God. God seen his heart, but he, he wanted Adam to know where he was at. He says, Adam, where are you? See, when we trust, trust in our doing, you hide from the presence of God. But God don't want you to be scared because you know the Bible says he's full of grace and truth. Truth is conviction. But that grace says, listen, I don't just leave you there. I give you a way out. But it's not just many ways or this or that. It's Christ and what he did at that cross is our way out. It's for Him to, for me to bring my heart, my, my heart to him and say, here I am. I, I, I can't keep following the ways that I'm going and the things that I'm doing. But I'm going to just trust in you, Lord. I'm going to trust that you sent your son in the likeness of me, the problem. I've never seen a buried man bothered <laughs> me and brother Chris were talking about this a while ago never seen a, a, a buried man if he was buried in Christ by baptism unto death meaning his death not water baptism but believing that work that he did there he was baptized into Christ so if you're buried in him let me tell you something the reason why winds of doctrines blow people around and they're like a bush in the desert 
tossed to and fro with every wind of doctors because they're not believing what Jesus did at that cross because when you're believing what he did at that cross from your heart because we we got to get to the place where my heart's deceitfully wicked I can't trust it I got to bring it to the one and only place that God can bury it deal with it conform me into his image you know Jesus is that mold when that clay is being worked out in that mold it hurts <laughs> but that mold is Jesus the cross is how I get in that mold and stay in that mold and let God do the work. Let God do the pruning. Let God do everything that he needs to do in and through us that Christ might be seen and glorified. But church, is personal. I don't want to leave that too much tonight. It's, it's personal. It's like we're always thinking about somebody else. It's personal. He wants your heart today, even if you say, he wants it. He longs for it. The greatest love ever was poured out on Calvary. He longs for it. Amen. So the Bible says he searches that heart. He tries it. Amen. To give every man according to his way and according to the fruit of his doing. If it's not the way of the cross, I don't want to be found and God look at my work because he can't honor what I do. It's got to be Christ get a lot more done if we'll know where we got to lay down <laughs> amen rest there's rest when we say rest that's get some people uneasy but I like it some people say are you telling me to do nothing pastor Scotty my lord you be the, the doing this person in your church when you learn where to rest all that we doing in the flesh God can use that vessel Amen. Amen. Let's flip to 1 Peter chapter 4 right quick. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 4. This is good. This is good. I love the Lord. Amen. Can't get over what he did for me. It gets sweeter and sweeter as the day goes by. Amen. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 4. It says, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us. Uh-oh. It's personal in the flesh when well, we read in Jeremiah 17 that he was talking about how we arm ourselves in the flesh and God says you're cursed I can't honor it I can't work for you I want to I'm waiting there's only one way hallelujah Christ has suffered for us in the flesh arm yourselves likewise with the same mind now let me say something here this doesn't mean that we go along and try to bring on self-hurt and self-hurt suffering it's not what that means it means arm yourselves everything about you who you are spirit soul and mind and the work that he did in his flesh on the cross that that that's my victory that's my victory that the enemy is like a roaring lion he's seeking to devour you he wants to destroy you he wants to kill you he wants to rob you of that liberty where Christ has set you free Christ suffered for us in the flesh he says arm yourselves likewise with the same mind for he who has suffered in the flesh has seized from sin hallelujah hallelujah okay now you know what this tells us many today we all want to be delivered from something today amen from deliverance faith to faith amen so let's 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 get it off of like I'm the only one or this one or the Lord wants to deliver you today from us trusting in our ways and our doings and, 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 and rest in his provision and trust and, and likewise with the same mind. That means the posture of your heart has to stay where he suffered for us in the flesh that where I have victory over this flesh. It says he has seized from sin because see we don't say no to that thing. Whatever it is. Somebody might be struggling with cigarettes. 
I tell people back at home, I say, I don't symptom preach. We don't. Jesus died for us, the sin nature. We preach the answer for the problem. We don't sugarcoat it, call it this or that. If homosexual, if you're struggling with homosexuality and, and you've been born again and, you, and you're still feeling pulled at times like that, let me tell you something. you got to go to the cross. you got to stay there because it's a bondage of the sin nature that wants to pull you in that direction. And really, the fruit of it is death. See, that sin nature, when it's not, when it's not, you're not looking to what Christ did in his flesh where we arm ourselves, the Bible says. That means you got to arm yourself. Now, many today are arming themselves with weapons and this and that, and, and God forbid if I hit on that right now, but they arm themselves with all this and all that instead of arming themselves in what Christ did in his flesh. Hey. The truth is the truth. We need the truth. So we see in the scripture, what time is it? I don't want to hold you too long. Amen, I don't either. But Pastor Curtis got one big one back there. Yep, Wayne Voss always talks about that clock. <laughs> Amen. So we see that we got to keep our mind on what he did in his flesh. That means, that means that's pertaining to the work that he did at the cross. It's not pertaining to nothing else. He lived the perfect life representing you and me. So there's nothing we can come up with today, year 2021, that we can get victory in the flesh. We got to take our mind, the posture of our heart, saved, spirit-filled, born-again Christian, to quit focusing on the things that's got the flesh in bondage. To realize that there's a nature that he died in his flesh to redeem me from. And I got to say yes to the cross. And the cross says no to the sin. Y'all with me? See, we we'll say bring cigarettes and lay them at the altar. I used to say that. I say, God wants you hard. He wants you hard at the cross. Every day. Amen. So we preach the answer. We live it. Breathe it. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. This is not vain glory. We're not, we're not, we're not trying to bring vain glory in the house of God. Amen. We're not trying to say we're getting victory in some other way. That's fallacy. Amen. That's false. But when we say yes and it's personal and all I see is Jesus, and what he did for me, that he, redeem, he can redeem me today. Let him do that work in you. Amen? It's my prayer for myself. Lord, do it in me. Keep me hungry for the things of God. That he no, should no longer live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. Oh, hallelujah. The will of God is that you rest in the work of God. The will of God is that you take your flesh and rest in what he did in his flesh at the cross. That's the will of God. I'm a Bible believer. It's real big right there. Praise God. To the will of God. Now, I want God's will for my life. And every Christian today, and you might be watching my internet, and you, you want the will of God. And the reason why we come up with fads and schemes and things like that before coming to the cross is because we love God and we want to serve God, just don't know how. And let me tell you something. If you're watching today, just, say, just, just push everything out of the way and come to the cross with your heart and say yes to the will of God for your life, that he died the death for you, and then you can have victory. You can have victory. The will of God. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Amen? Amen. I'm going to close here on this next. Flip with me to Colossians. Well, I, I'll get in here. I'll, I'll be here two hours with in Colossians, my Lord. <laughs> We was talking in the in the session today. It felt like we could have stayed in there all day, and I believe we could have. I'm getting talking about the will of God. When you realize you're in the will of God, that's his son and what he's done at that cross, I'm going to tell you something, you got peace with God. 
You got peace to say hi, hallelujah. I ain't got to bring nothing to the table but me. Here I am, Lord. Oh, poor pitiful me. Amen. So let's read something right here, and then we're going to close. Stand, have an altar service. Let God do what he wants to do. Amen, as he's imparting his word to us. Colossians chapter 1. Let's start in verse 18, and it says, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from. <laughs> I love seeing that. From the dead. Now, it, let's make something clear. He's not talking about Jesus had to be born again. That's garbage. He was a sin offering, dying for the sinner. Amen. He was raised from the dead because of his perfect death. Y'all with me? He says that in all things, he might have the preeminence. Now, all to me, now I'm just simple-minded. All is all. Amen. Now, if we believe the Bible and we believe the Scripture, hey, this pertains to all things. That Listen, church, that he says this, for it pleased the Father that in him, he's talking about Jesus, that in him should all the fullness dwell. Now, we want the will of God for our lives. We want the fullness of God for our lives. But it don't just come because we weep and cry and do all the things that the religious side has, has taught wrong for years and decades and years and years. But when the truth of God's Word is preached and proclaimed to an individual that he died for, that God wants you to know that he wants to set you free from yourself, that you can get into a place which is his son at the cross and live and dine in the fullness of God. Now, I want that for my life. You want that for your life. Amen? You wouldn't be here on a Saturday if you didn't. Used to, we would hear people get up and preach and bull whip. It's like Pharaoh. They wouldn't they want to let the people go. They want to in bondage to something. Make them feel less than. Well, I want you to know Jesus died for you. Jesus' death is your victory for you. And for you to live a victorious life in the fullness of God and the will of God, it's by His death for you. His death is your victory, friend. So having made peace through the blood of His cross, by Him to reconcile all things unto Himself, by him, I say, whether things be in earth or things be in heaven. Hallelujah. Let's all stand tonight. Singers and musicians, if you can make your way back. You know, as we're talking about being planted in that death of Christ, that the Bible says that that is the fullness of God. That is the will of God. But we have to arm ourselves with our mind in that work of God daily. That if you want to see the fullness of God, it only works through His Son. God wants to do a work amongst His people today like never before. He wants healing to come to your body. He wants provision. He wants you to understand this love that He poured out on Calvary's hill. Be unlocked to your heart tonight with just simply believing. Believing again. You might say, I've heard the cross. I believe in what He did at the cross. But God's speaking to you and to I to say, here's my heart again, Lord. I'm coming back to your provision, the provision of the cross, that work that you did there. I'm bringing you my heart. God, you see the struggles. You see everything that's going on in my life. But I'm not focused on none of that. I'm going to focus on you and what you did at that cross. And I'm going to bring you my heart, Lord. And let God do that work. Let God minister to you this hour. As they sing and play, these altars is open. If you need a touch from God, if you need prayer, if you just...
just want to kneel down before God and you just want to say, I don't want to lose what God gave me. If you're hungry for this truth, step out and just come to this front. We'll be glad to pray with you. Thank you.